What's the mission, boss? Tabemonoda. Oh, sorry, food. Yeah, of course. Mm. うーん。お前の任務はシンプルだ。ハウス博士は鎮痛剤を盗むために80年代のローデシアに行った。If you've ever not gotten slide lock on your Glock because of your grip, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. Like and comment. The comment section is known to be extremely retarded, so make sure that you get in there and uphold his reputation. Guys, the biggest support of the channel is, of course, Brownells. A big thank you to them. Very cool, Brownells. Of course, we have a couple sponsors of, sponsors of this particular video. We have Groove Belts and Acre Gold, the old tried and true big thank you to them ladies gentlemen and my often forgotten but most certainly not by me mid-hair refueling aka sky sex welcome to the channel today we're going to be talking about a very cool handgun we have the springfield armory sa35 they have brought it back and if you don't know the browning high power is my favorite handgun of all time so i am slash was excited but before we get into the review we're going to do what we always do, full disclosure. So, Springfield Armory, what is my relationship th with them? Uh, what happened? How much money did they give me? Et cetera, et cetera. So, Springfield Armory sent me two pistols. So, they sent me this first one. A lot of issues there. So, I asked them to send me a new... We'll talk about it. I promise. So, I asked them to send me a second one. I'm sending this one back. Don't worry, Springfield. They're probably freaking out right now. We'll get it back to them. Then they sent me a second one. Uh, also issues. We're going to be holding on to this one for further review after this. And uh, there's no exchange of money. Ammunition is provided for by Norma. A big thank you to them. Very cool, Norma. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that is a relationship. Um, we're going to be comparing it with a couple other handguns, specifically FN made and Mark III modified Browning High Powers. God, this thing is sexy. And of course, another FN manufacturer, <laughs> uh, Mark III modified Browning High Power. As you can see, I'm a little excited because I love the Browning High Power. And this is an exciting video. Okay, full disclosure out of the way. Let's get into it. So you say, Grantham, I don't know what a Browning High Power is. That's fine. I'm here to educate you to some extent or another. I'm not forgotten weapons. Remember that. <laughs> That's going to be a meme. But let's say this. The Browning High Power was designed in 1935. Many uh, design changes were made, although originally designed by John Moses Browning, our Lord and Savior. It has been modified in very, by various other designers throughout the years. And it's important to say that Belgium perfected this weapon. Now, at the time, this was the high power because this bitch held 13 rounds, which was a big deal 
back in the day. Now, obviously not as big of a deal nowadays. In fact, modern magazines hold around 15 rounds. But at the time, it was a big deal, 9mm. Man, that was a great weapon. Now, this ended up being adopted by a lot of militaries. Anywhere from uh, Canada, our great cold neighbors to the north, to Nazi Germany, to Belgium, to... Uh, the United Kingdom to many other great entities. FBI, HRT had them for a little bit. They were super customized. And of course, um, we had the legendary SAS. In fact, when I posted a Browning High Power, Christian Craghead himself, um, Obi-Wan Nairobi, hopped in and said, hey, I carried a high power for a long time. Pretty cool. So, including Saddam Hussein has also carried a high power. Point is, the high power is a very popular firearm, but primarily outside of the United States. And it's been known for its legendary reliability for a long, long time. Now, unfortunately, it never really caught on in the United States. We only had place in our hearts for two John Moses Browning designs in 1911 and the M2 Browning. But in any case, people know of the legendary reliability, the legendary Browning high power. A lot of weapons were based off of it. So there's a lot of mystique that comes along with it, kind of like a 1911. So it is with great sadness that FN discontinued the Browning High Power and all production on the legendary High Power, the FN made High, high Power, were ceased in 2018. So, of course, many, many foreign companies began to make them. But as Americans, of course, we only want two things, either the original company or American made. So in the case of Springfield Army, they have answered the call and they have brought a domestic High Power copy to the United States that they have made. The question is, how does it run? Okay, let's get into it. So to start off with, we have 2,000 rounds on this guy. Whew, let's go. All right, we've got 2,000 rounds on this guy, and we saw a couple issues and a couple good things as well. In many ways, the SA-35 has improved many parts of the high power and many things that were common, what would you say, complaints about the original high power design. So we'll get into that, and we'll talk about what makes us good and what makes us not so good. So to start off with, good, the barrel. The barrel is a cold hammer forged barrel. Now, a lot of people have noted that they don't like the twist rate of the nine millimeter barrel that Springfield Armory has introduced saying that it's not going to be as accurate. I found that the barrel on the SA-35 to be plenty accurate. I've made shots at 120, pretty much all day, 80, 50 yards, all day. Um, accuracy is not really a concern for me. My sights weren't quite on, um, but those are easily adjusted and drifted. And that was with multiple individuals where my sights were just slightly off. But that's not really that big of a deal. The point is, is that for me, this high power barrel has been phenomenal. Cold Hammer Forged, of course, is a good thing. So they have done good things with the barrel in my mind. Now, another thing to note is that both the slide and frame are forged. Um, this is in stark contrast to the FN, which were cast. Now, I will say that the FNs were never known for being weak in any shape, way, or form. So, you know, it's the heat treatment and a lot of other things that go into play that make, you know, a casting versus a forging better. But they use forging along with modern CNC techniques, and we have a fairly tight-fitting gun. In fact, in many ways, a little bit tighter than the FNs. But I found over about 2,000 rounds, it has loosened up, and it feels much more like a typical FN high power. When it comes to the finish, the finish honestly really isn't my favorite at all, and we'll get into that in just a moment. The it's, it's a matte blued. It doesn't really look all that great in my mind. I know some people like that kind of gray color, but I much prefer the, the black color of the original high powers. That's just me personally. In any case, it is what it is when it comes to that. But I haven't found the finish to be particularly tough. So I found that it's wearing off not fairly easily compared to what I expect. And in addition to that, uh, I always throw my guns. That's it's like par for the course on Grand Thumb. And this one scratched up fairly easily, as you can see, which was surprising to me. Now, I also want to point out uh, with that first high power that I got from Springfield, um, it had a lot of issues. We kind of have corrected it, but something happened in the bluing process, and maybe it's going to be hard to see, but it kind of, it was like etched weird. Like they're, they didn't quite have it right when they're bluing it. So I had a bunch of really weird streaks and etching on it. We'll show a couple pictures right here, but... The point is the first gun that I got did not look good at all. I was actually pretty surprised that they sent me one with um, obvious finish problems, but um, they tried to tell me it was oil. Spoiler, it was not oil. But in any case, we've worked on kind of trying to get those out, but it's just, it's deep into the metal. So it's rust at some location. So it was really odd. 
But in any case, um, I haven't heard of anybody else having those finish problems on their SA35s. So I think that was just me. Now, one of the greatest things that they've done with the Browning High Power are the sights. The sights are much improved. The Unouch sights that they have used are extremely easy to pick up. And I've been very happy with the type of iron sights that they use. Now, I have no doubt that in the future, they will likely be offering a version probably with a red dot, I would guess. But for now, these iron sights are great and they're precisely what you want. And in addition to that, I'm fairly certain that these are Novak cut. So it's gonna be fairly easy to swap out the sights for something that you need. Talked about that, we're gonna hit the first issue that we have here. There is something wrong with the extractor or the extra extraction in general, I'm not sure. Now what's interesting about this is in all the reviews that I've watched, a couple of them, I think I've gotten close to the issue. Uh, I think Guns and Ammo uh, magazine mentioned that they had a failure to extract and they stopped the review at around, I think 760 or 800 rounds. So what's interesting about that is in our testing, we first encountered the issue at around 800 rounds. And after that, it persisted. So this is how it went for us. Firing, everything was going great. <laughs> it was wonderful. Uh, once we had injured rounds, we began to experience an extraction issue. What would happen is the weapon would fire. It would not pull the casing out of the chamber. So we have failure to extract. It would then cycle back, attempt to load around. We get a double feed. So at that point, of course, you'd have to pull the magazine out and get that round out of, out of there. And then you'd have to get the round out of the chamber. Now, due to the way that the Browning High Power wants to feed, that extractor would not come up over that rim and it would simply lock before it could get over that rim. So it was just like a hard malfunction. So no, many, no matter how many times you'd cycle it, it would take maybe 10 or 15 uh, cycles before it'd finally catch on that rim. And that, that's kind of the way the extractor on the High Power works. But beyond that, it was it's aggravating. So one of the best ways to get that casing out was using either a cleaning rod or a knife to kind of jimmy that little brass casing out. But it was frustrating because this began to occur every two to four magazines. Um, and it continued. And so I guess the question we had was, did we dirty the gun or did we break something? So at the 800 round mark, we went to our gunsmith, we took it apart. You can see the video right here. And it was fairly dirty under the extractor on the Browning, on the SA-35. So we hypothesized that perhaps the carbon was in some way impeding the action of the extractor. So we cleaned out the extractor channel. Now also due to BH Spring Solutions with their video um, stating that they had burrs in their extractor channel, we also inspected it for burrs. However, we didn't find any on our particular SA-35. So we fired 800 rounds. We started having those issues pretty regularly. And then we cleaned out the extractor channel, got the extractor back in. At that point, we went out back to the range. I wanted to get to about 1600 rounds to see if the issue would persist or, or what have you. Now it should be noted that at this time we began to change our ammunition. We, need, we were testing different types of ammunition because we wanted to see if this was an ammunition issue or, or what, if it was a heat issue. So we were letting the gun both be hot and cold while trying out to see if we could get this replicated. So we used a combination of Norma 9mm, we used uh, Winchester, we used military ball ammo, we used spear defensive ammunition, um, and some Hornady ammunition as well. So all pretty good ammunition, pretty hot loaded. Well, not supposed to be a hot, but it's as good defensive, good, you know, duty type ammo. And no matter the ammunition type or how hot or how cold the gun was, every about two to four mags, we get that same issue. And it was fairly frustrating. You can see a video of it right here. So this right here is a pretty common problem. We're gonna get the Browning High Power. You start getting it at about 800 rounds. And essentially, if you can come in here, you can see that we have a round that has been fired. However, not extracted. You can see the extractor kind of barely got on there and then it attempted to feed. So the extractor isn't grabbing on. So let's see if it does it. Okay, we're able to lock it back. Okay, we've been getting this quite a bit. It happens about every three to four mags approximately. We'll see if it snaps over. Now you can see right there, the extractor isn't able to pop over on that round. So we'll try this again. Still no. Still no. Can't hammer it into place. So usually, there we go. Kind of barely grabbed it there. So classic problem we're seeing with the high power. So as you can see, this occurred at multiple times during our filming, um, our principal filming of the intro and all that type of stuff. So this is a fairly um, 
just common issue. And it lasted from 800 rounds through 2,000 rounds. And at that point, I don't think it's going to get any better. I, I'm not going to invest any more ammunition into it. There's a lot of things that can cause extraction issues in a Browning high power. Um, we don't unfortunately have the gunsmithing expertise, nor do we have the ammunition to troubleshoot Springfield's problem. Um, I think that a lot of reviewers aren't really fully getting a grasp on this particular issue, maybe because their guns are fine or because maybe they're not getting high enough on their round counts. I'm not sure which it is. But in any case, a lot of people have noted that perhaps it might be the low serial numbers because we both of our high powers are in the three digit range that perhaps that was the issue. And even more interestingly, so my uh, serial number is 575. I had a guy who had serial number 576. I found him on my Facebook group. I know you're out there, brothers from another mother. Um, he also had the exact same issue, but much sooner than I did. So I find that very interesting. In any case, I have no doubt that Springfield will make this right. Um, I'm hoping it's just an extractor issue or something like that, but I definitely do want to let you guys be aware of that. I'm not sure if this is going to be coming up more, if I've found something that's going to blow everything out of the water. It's hard to say. We have a uh, sample size of two um, with a couple other people who have noted it in their weapons as well. But quite frankly, a few people have gotten their high power round counts up that high at this point. I'm simply reporting what I've seen and what a few of my friends have seen with their three digit serial number high powers. Troublesome. At the same time, a company like Mark III, who does all my high powers, my general work, I've spent a stupid amount of money on them. Uh, they can easily fix the issue, right? You can easily change the extractor out. And if I'm not mistaken, in the case of BH Spring Solutions, they swapped out their extractor, the spring, and they got their gun working no problem. So it could be something as simple as that, or there could be a multitude of issues. Again, there's a lot of things that could cause these problems to occur. So I know it feels like I'm really ragging on the SA-35. I'm not. I'm just bringing up the issues that we've had. I'm very neutral on this particular issue. Now, from there, moving back. So that being said, we did a lot of really good things. So on the Binding High Power right here, we have the side stop. Perfect. The only problem that a lot of people have, and this is more of a high power ism than it is a problem with Springfield Armory, uh, with a modern thumbs forward grip, a lot of people are going to find that their thumb tends to ride right where it shouldn't. So some people will get intermittent slide lock, even though the magazine is full. This is common due to grip. This guy was meant to be fired one handed or with a different type of grip. So this can be corrected with different types of slide stops, or you might have to just modify your grip and get your thumbs a little bit higher something along those lines, it's going to be something that you're going to have to figure out. But one of the best parts about the high power is going to be the safety. So a couple things here. One, they have a different type of safety than is what has been typically seen in high powers. So we have our typical FN made right here. Uh, these work, but as you can see, the shelf is not as big as what you have on the Springfield Armory. I would say that their safety is phenomenal. It feels really good. It really clicks off very nicely. It just, it works really well. And I'm very appreciative of the amount of work and design that went into that particular safety. Now, with the safety, a couple of people have noted that on the safety, uh, when they first got the gun, that they could engage the safety partially up and it would lock the gun up. So what's interesting about that, as you can see, it didn't do it right there. Let's see if it does it on this one. Nope, not on that one either. So I don't think this is a widespread problem. A couple of people have noted that they can push the safety up when the hammer is down, which you shouldn't be able to do. And it does have a little bit of play. And mine did at first lock up when I would do that. However, I found with the break in time, about 500 plus rounds, that that ceased to occur. So I don't consider it an actual issue that the Springfield Armory SA-35s are encountering. Now, another thing that we have to note on the high power is how good the grips are. The grips are actually really well made. Not something that I'd expect for such a low price point. So grips are beautifully made, beautifully checkered. The problem with high power for a lot of people, me included, is that if you have medium sized man hands, I think John Moses Browning was just a little bit smaller than me. And my grip is just a little bit too large for this gun. So I really end up wrapping it up and I really need a thicker grip. So typically on my high powers, I use Uncle Mike's grips. They actually work really well. Uh, surprisingly, or like a VZ grip with a palm swell or something to give me a little bit more, I want a little bit of thickness to grab onto. 
And that has kind of been my problem with the Springfield Armory. That's easily swappable. So again, all high power grips work interchangeably with the SA35, which is super nice. Um, I just endeavor to do my reviews with what it comes with. So that's what we have right there. Now it should also be noted that from what I've seen from many other gunsmiths and many other places that all FN parts will fit interchangeably in with the SA35. So there's parts commonality. Awesome. That's absolutely wonderful. Moving down to the trigger. The trigger is probably one of the best parts of the SA35. And out of the box, the SA35 is the best high power trigger I've ever felt. Now, I want to note the first gun I received was a really nice, really light trigger. This one, not quite as light or as nice. We'll talk about why this one has to go back as well. Now, with this one, I find I have about a six pound, maybe about 5.7 pound break. So let's go ahead, let's go set trigger together. Let's talk about how good it feels. So safety off, safety always off. And we're gonna go ahead and feel into that. So there's no longer a magazine disconnect. Why that's awesome is a magazine disconnect added unnecessary complication to the trigger pull. So without that, trigger is way nicer. So pressing up into that trigger right there, we have about two millimeters of play, hit that first wall, about 5.8 according to my Lyman pull gauge. Feel that one more time, nice. Reset, kind of sucks on this gun. Feeling that forward, far, 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 far. That's so weird, that reset is so long. Unnecessarily long. You know what? High power triggers have never known been known for being you know, super amazing. Um, SA35 is really good for an out of the box high power. That being said, got to flex it. Mark three firearms, their trigger job. Zero take up right there. About a 3.5 pound let off. Still that reset. Right there. Whew, she's fast. 3.5 pound let off. Man, that is a nice trigger. Mark three firearms, they kick ass. But out of the box, 100%, this one's better. Blow a hole in the ceiling. In any case, the trigger is much improved and it's something that absolutely should have been done on earlier high power, so I'm glad that Springfield Armory did it. Now when it comes to the magazine catch, awesome. Now when it comes to the magazine release, awesome. Feels good, no problems there. The correct amount of stiffness and it is very nicely done. It feels great. Now, magazines are cool. so. For a long time, Metgar has made Brown and High Power magazines, and they now are making uh, magazines for Springfield Armory, just with Springfield Armory's little stamp, and they work great. Metgar magazines have long been known to be phenomenal. They're made in Italy, and Italians just know their firearms. So in any case, these magazines are great. I'm very happy that they chose to use Metgar. That is a really good idea from Springfield Armory. Good on you guys. Now, the only thing I could say is that I, I do want more capacity. This is 15 rounds right here, and the high power is a very svelte, full-size handgun, but nonetheless, we had a little base pad right here. Give us, give us like two extra rounds. That's what I want. Now, another thing that they did is great is that the serial number on original high powers is right here on the grip, and that was a real pain in the ass for people who wanted to add texturing for the grip, and uh, companies had to come up with really unique ways of getting around that. In the case of Mark III, you can see they did that beautiful inlay right there. But on the Springfield Armory, it's not there. It is up on the frame right there, which is a better location for a serial number. So good job, Springfield, on that. Now, that being said, the high power is not the most comfortable gun to hold compared to a lot of modern handguns nowadays. So in the case of this mostly original FN right here, this area right here can be quite sharp. And on the Springfield Armory gun, is a very sharp edge. And that kind of goes with a lot of the parts on the Springfield Armory. It feels sharp. So these, if there's one thing I could tell them to do, a couple things actually, they really need to make that not so sharp right there because I will say two, 400, 500 rounds over a day, no problem. A uh, thousand plus rounds in a day, this thing eats into your hand. You can kind of see a little mark there being a baby. But the point is I, I do wish it would really add a lot to comfortability to not make that area so sharp. In addition to that, a thing that the SA35 desperately needs is some type of beaver tail right there. That would make this so, so much more comfortable to hold and shoot. So you can see here, as we go back to it, 
on this Mark III, this is a pretty common thing to do in the gunsmithing world on a Browning High Power, add that nice little beaver tail. That way when I grip into it, I can really get high in it, and it also helps me resist recoil, and it just feels good when I shoot it, and is a great addition to the Browning High Power. Man, Springfield, please, for the love of God, add a tang in here. That's going to make things so, you know, so much better. Now, I will say that when it comes to the um, hammer, they definitely did recontour it. It feels great. I'm not really getting hammer bite or anything. It's just that sharp frame that ended up really biting them in the ass on that. So add that tang. That would be so much better. And speaking of hammers, that was the weirdest thing. So on this weapon that we're returning, the original one that we received, in addition to the finish problems, there's something wrong with the hammer as well. So the hammer isn't quite centered. So what was occurring is it was beginning to peel back the metal in the hammer. It was the weirdest thing. So when we're firing this thing, over 200 or so rounds that we put through this thing before we decided that there were some, a lot of weird things going on with it. It started to peel back that metal off the hammer. It was like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So I want to chalk it up to a QC issue. I haven't seen other people who have had that issue on their high powers, but that was my intro to the SA-35 was this terrible finish and it peeling the uh, the metal back on the hammer. And I was like, what is going on? Now, I will say that on this gun, the new one that they sent us, um, that there are no issues with when it comes to that. Uh, that hammer is fine. No issues with it peeling back or anything like that. And it feels great. But just as a quick note, it's just, it's odd. And that kind of gets us to the end. You know, the high power especially this one, isn't super comfortable to shoot because of those kind of sharp edges at the back of the weapon. And the high power was never a, like the softest shooting handgun. It, it felt good though, and especially with a lot of the upgrades you see with a lot of these weapons out there, they can feel amazing. Um, the Springfield Army SA-35 is not my favorite handgun to shoot, to be honest. And I know I'm being a little bit harsh on it, but I think if they added a couple things to kind of ease up the comfortability of holding the firearm, it'd be much better in my opinion. In any case, I think a lot of these things are fairly easy to fix. So I don't think that this is like the end of the SA-35 or anything crazy like that. I'm sure uh, it's not every gun that's having a lot of these issues, but I think there's a couple things that can be updated on these, specifically the extractor, if those weapons have problems, the sharpness at the back of the frame right here. And of course, a beaver tail would just be incredible and make this an incredible weapon. So overall, I would say that if you're gonna get one, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong. I think a little bit of work from a couple different custom shops can make this a really incredible firearm. Um, it is disappointing with you know the 699 price tag uh, that it's not you know absolutely perfect, but I understand. The high powers that were being sold by FN were selling for like 900, 1000 when they were new in production. So I understand that getting the price point down to where they did, that certain sacrifices have to be made. In any case, I am very excited that we have a high power being made by Springfield that is going to be great for the um, custom market out there because I think that these are good base guns to be customized off of. In any case, Check it out, fire, fire them, see if it's for you. If not, NBD, lots of other great handguns out there. And the thing about it is, as cool as these handguns are, the fact of the matter is, if you don't train with this, you're still going to suck with it. So make sure you get training. Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic, Pat McNamara, tons of great guys willing to train you. Make sure that you get training. The weapon is the tool. You are the weapon. So make sure that you hone that weapon and make it great. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I've got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys. Make sure you brush your teeth. Make sure you floss. And make sure you rinse. Oral hygiene is incredibly important and can affect your overall health. So nobody's ever told you before. Clean your teeth. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. Take care. A lot more great things coming, like exploding 50 cal rounds.